Once upon a time, a long time ago, as related in the Quran, there was a prophet called Suleiman, who inherited from his father prophethood and abundance. Then he made supplication to God, Grant me a kingdom the like of which will never be granted to anyone after me. So God answered this selfish prayer and gave Suleiman a mighty kingdom and control over the jinn, the animals, the birds, the insects and even the natural elements like the wind which he commanded to do whatever he willed and go wherever he wanted. But despite this kingdom, the like of which will never be granted to anyone after him, the achievements of Suleiman, related in the Qur'an, are comparatively minor by the standards of neighboring empires of the time, such as the Assyrians, the Egyptians, or the Babylonians, not to mention by today's standards. For example, when relating the wondrous feats that the jinn performed for Suleiman, the Qur'an rather naively boasts they made for him whatever he desires, such as arches, statues, basins as large as watering troughs, and cooking pots built into the ground. It's obvious that the story of Suleiman is simply an embellishment of earlier myths, inherited from people with primitive understanding and of limited possibilities. It's full of bizarre events, such as the story of the ant who warned the other ants about the approach of Suleiman and his army, telling them to get into their homes so they don't get stamped on. Suleiman, who appears to also have supernatural hearing, heard what the ant was saying, and it made him smile. Another peculiar story is the story of the hoopoe bird, Suleiman was reviewing his armies of men, jinn, animals and insects and had them in rows so he could check everything was in order when he noticed a small gap in the row of birds where the hoopoe bird should have been. He became very angry and decides to abandon all the important affairs of his kingdom and devote himself to the scandalous issue of a missing hoopoe bird. Suleiman even threatens to torture this poor little bird if he doesn't have a good excuse. When the hoopoe bird returns, he tells Suleiman that he was gone because he had flown to a big kingdom and relates all that he had seen regarding the Queen of Sheba. Now despite the fact that Suleiman had a kingdom the like of which will never be granted to anyone, and despite the fact that he controlled the wind and the jinn, and huge armies. Suleiman had no knowledge of this neighboring kingdom until he was informed of this by the hoopoe bird. Suleiman immediately decides, without any hesitation, to conquer the kingdom of Sheba, just like a greedy, volatile tyrant. So he sends the little hoopoe bird back with a letter demanding that the queen come immediately to him to surrender, or he will march against her kingdom with his huge army. Suleiman then decides to show off to her and impress her, so he ordered the jinn to magically materialize her throne from Yemen to Jerusalem in the blink of an eye, and orders them to build a magnificent palace with a glass floor before she arrives. When the Queen of Sheba arrives, she is duly amazed, and the drama is emphasized with a somewhat sexy scene where the queen mistakes the glass floor for water and pulls up her dress to reveal her leg, before finally submitting herself to Suleiman. The only thing missing to make this a classic Hollywood ending is a long kiss. In keeping with the bizarre events of Suleiman's story related in the Qur'an is his death. One day Suleiman was leaning on a stick watching the jinn working for him when he suddenly died in this leaning position. Oddly however he did not fall down but stayed in this position not speaking nor moving nor blinking nor twitching and so no one noticed he was dead.
the jinn continued to work in fear of Suleiman. This continued for a very long time, night and day, with no one daring to question why Suleiman was just standing there and not moving. Until along came an insect that started nibbling away at Suleiman's stick. Eventually, the stick became eaten away, and Suleiman fell to the ground. Then the jinn realized that he had been dead all the time, and God had played an amusing practical joke on them. The End I'm not against relating myths and legends for amusement, or even for some perceived metaphorical wisdom. But what I am against is presenting them as if they are historical fact. Had there really been such a mighty kingdom as the Quran claims, then we would expect to find a great deal of evidence, both archaeological and in written references, from the writings of the dynasties and empires in the area. It's obvious that the story of Suleiman in the Quran is fictitious nonsense that completely lacks logic, let alone material and historical evidence. But if you ask Muslims whether the story of Suleiman is true, they will tell you that anything related in the Quran is a hundred percent true, since the Quran is the infallible and literal word of God. And this is the great tragedy that the believer believes in nonsense simply because it is written in a book that they attribute to God, and they would rather accept the absurd than question that book. Do, do.